And if any of them, if any of them ever start off a presentation saying we're excited to be here, you, you fire them on the spot. <laughs> That's the dumbest <laughs> icebreaker <laughs> waste of time. Um, all right. I'm going to get a little, a little deep here, Bill. Um, not that deep, but, but in all sincerity, I mean, in a real sense, you are, you're starting over, mm -hmm. uh, after a pretty illustrious career to this point. Um, now, and, and with that, it's not your first rodeo. So in that sense, you're not, you know, this is not a new thing to you, but what, what propelled you to make the decision now? to start this agency? Oh, that's a good question. Um, after the Richards Group unraveled, maybe you've heard of that. <laughs> um, we, we, we did make a deal with the new leaders that we could go out and moonlight okay. on our own until they could hire us back full time, potentially. Oh. Um, and so that poking our heads out into the world, we learned a lot in a short amount of time and one of the things we learned working for other agencies for a brief amount of time from New York to Austin to LA is, and this was a surprise to us, frankly, is that what we do, what we're really good at, Todd and I, as co-creative directors, writer, art director, it's just not that common. And we were a little surprised because at the Richards Group, we were surrounded by the funniest, smartest, most focused, yeah, uh, greatest thinkers all the time and the pressure was always super high and stand standards were super high uh so you had to bring it every time and we found out in our experience anyway that that's rare that that you're you're on strategy you're super buttoned up and you think differently and you're unafraid to tell these stories in a certain way that makes clients and creative directors lose sleep at night in a good way yeah um so I have to say we're, we are reluctant agency owners. We didn't mean for this to happen. Right. I'm, not, I'm not apologizing, but so we just thought it, in that brief experience out there is like, we should, we should make a run at this because it's, it's valuable. Yeah. This, this, this thing that we do, uh, but we didn't have a burning desire to start our own agency. We had it really good. We got to work on what we wanted to work on. We got to pitch what we wanted to pitch. We, we never really thought about starting our own thing <laughs> but it's almost like we felt like just didn't have a choice um so it's funny how things work out but i, I i'm not going to be that guy sitting in front of you on these things saying oh yeah so it's always our plan to <laughs> and our five-year goal is are you gonna ask me what our five-year goal is uh i am gonna ask a version of that yeah you, I'm, i am I, i'm gonna tell you we don't have one so, <laughs> but it's a, it's a, we didn't have any, we didn't have any goal. We didn't have a five day goal. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't mean for this to happen, but, uh, we believe in it. We're, we believe very strongly in it that we have something to offer that's different and, and valuable. Yeah. And I love, I love that you didn't, yeah, you didn't plan on this. I, I let me ask you this. And, and so there are other, and you know, this as well as anyone and, and then there's going to be folks watching right now. There are individuals working in the agency right now that don't necessarily want to be there. Like I want to do my, I can do this. I want to do my own thing. Or they're not at that agency anymore. They're solo or they're whatever they're doing. And they're like, I, I want to do this. Biggest piece of advice you could give to an individual right now that's thinking about pulling the trigger. If you, you probably, everybody's probably already doing it. And that would be <laughs> weed out people constantly. And that doesn't mean, uh, I'll say this, weed out, weed out people constantly. Yeah. Um, uh, the rally around the ones who match your level of give a shit. Okay. And first. those aren't, aren't going to be that many. And it's all about building that network and that network of trust. And you never know when you're going to need it. So, um, be, be building those alliances daily. Uh, 
because those are the people you're going to want to spend the rest of your career with. Yeah. Um, that's me, I guess. Um, so all of a sudden my network was super valuable. I wish, for, I wish, I guess, looking back that I had this thought that I would be calling on these people one day. Um, but, uh, we're starting to do, do that obviously sure. and you build the network and you leverage that network, but, um, you just never know. And it yeah. certainly was a, one day we were great. And the next day we were <laughs> kind of on our own. Right. We, we, we just, we just didn't see this coming. And the, the safety, the safety valve is your people that you, that have your back and know you that you don't have to pitch that, to know what you're about and how you do things and your value. So stay close to those people. That is awesome advice, whether you're starting a new agency or not. Um, yeah, because you don't know. So I like that a lot. Um, a whole other topic, because the, 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 the post-pandemic work from home thing bothers a lot of any company, right? But I, it's interesting how we, we had the report we just released a while back. We asked that very question. How has the work from home impacted agency culture? And man, there were some old school, like, I hate it. I want everyone's ass back in here yeah agencies were curve yeah. before any of that you know there were so many of them that were hybrid or you know the hours weren't super strict so i think they were better prepared from that standpoint but so I'll, all this to to ask you well, are you ever looking to have that building that that physical location unless you have one now and i just didn't know that but is that uh, no, don't don't have one now yeah. again the whole the whole low overhead thing right or uh, but sure Sure, we we love a foxhole. Yeah, um, uh, I don't like to be alone. <laughs> I like to share a good movie, a good meal, a, a great story, and a great idea with people. And the these squares um, are necessary. And frankly, I'm thankful because that really has helped us. We can be anywhere at any time, obviously. Sure, um, but uh, I do miss the room. I miss, I miss the energy of the room. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they can't replicate that. I 100% agree. And and we're all work from home, but we have eight or nine people in the office at any given time. We work in an old house near downtown Cincinnati, and it's an awesome, like, creative space. And we feel the energy of our agency clients. It's kind of a cool thing. It's not just a sales organization where we're doing widgets. And a great, a great day, a great day in your home office cannot compare to a great day in your downtown mm -hmm. Cincinnati with your people. That's 100% true. Yes. Even though I've got some cool stuff in my home office, but yeah, that's true. Um, You're trying to. You're trying. I see that. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I do agree with you. And I think for, especially for creative agency, that's got to be invaluable to have that team together. But I think there are a lot of them making it work. Um, what? Because they, they have no choice. But uh, yeah. Yeah. We, we, every chance we get, we gather the team at uh, Rooftop Dallas is where the central meeting point is. We Dallas is known for patios and sure. nice weather. So I mean, that's our office most of the time. Cool. Um, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know how you can legislate people in and out and wet days and all that stuff. That's got to be a nightmare. It's got to be. A nightmare. Yeah, we're not. I'm glad I don't have to deal with that. Yeah, that, is, that yeah, I don't know how people are doing that either. Um, uh. I am going to ask you the five-year question, but it's a little bit different than you said, and I'm, for, I, I'm forcing you. But, okay. but sincerely, so you think about where you came from. Think about Richards and how big it really got. Um, I think, and I yeah. might realize this, the largest independent agency in the country, in the New world. Yes. So yeah. as you see, I'm not asking you, but, but sincerely, in the next like 10 years, do you want to be there? Or does, do you want poke the bear? We've got a solid team of 30 yeah. example. I know that, and again, that's kind of putting you on the spot, but if you had your druthers, I mean, do you want to grow this thing to be that, that big? We even asked this a bunch and we don't have an answer. Okay. I mean, you already said it's it a, different, a different question, but it's kind of like, we're going to do our thing. No, we got no plans. We have no plans. Um, there are no goals there. I will say that we don't need to see our name on the side of a building. That's, that's not what drives us. Okay. Um, we will staff up accordingly. 
um, that day may come where we got to go from half a dozen to two dozen, three dozen. That doesn't scare me. Okay. Um, but that's not going to happen first. Right. That, and so we don't even have that expectation. We're, we're, we're trying, the best advice we got was don't force anything. Okay. And we have not forced anything. I, I didn't even force the other agency name that I wanted to name, which was nobody cares. <laughs> um, I wanted to force that, but I didn't force that. <laughs> not, which is true, isn't it? I mean, if you come at it knowing that little gym, nobody cares, then you're, you're destined to do some breakthrough. No, he, uh, he said he wouldn't be a part of that. So, so we hmm. put that, in, put that in a note pile. That's like my second favorite, I think after poke the bear, oh, yeah, I kind of like it, but nobody cares. Uh, yeah, pretty good. Can I sell these names that are in the scrap heap or no? Have you what? Can I sell these names? Uh, yeah. Well, now we got to copyright this thing or something. Uh, okay. Is this, am I under some sort of protection? You're doing some good. I'm sure. It's far. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, maybe. Uh, no is the answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I wanted to ask you, so, so you are not, I mean, you're not a, your position over these years has not been business development in, in the strict sense of the word. However, you've done your fair share of pitching quite a vivid in fact, yeah. right? And in that sense, you are part of the business development engine. Um, how is that? This is a big question, I realize, but and not just COVID, but how, in your opinion, is, has pitching changed the last five to 10 years? I mean, COVID, of course, changed everything in that sense, but or, or do you think it has changed that much? change a ton. I mean, again, back to the room that the energy of the room pit, pitching on a zoom like platform is tough. Yeah. Especially for those of us who need that feedback, that bio feedback in the room to read to the go. Golden, yeah. Like a, like a frontline guy of a band, for example, you, you feed off the crowd and yeah. Um, so, so what I do, uh, I just imagine every joke is landing. Every, every line is hitting, every point is being made. I just assume it is. Yeah. Uh, cause I can cause, cause and you don't have to memorize as much. That's good. You can just read it off the screen. True. As long as you're not obviously read, but, uh, so, but I still, I can't see the room. I can't even see the squares a lot of times. Yeah. So I, I, I missed, I missed that. Um, but the fact that, uh, everything is so spread out and so virtual, it's made our agency possible. Um, yeah. Fair. We, we can deliver the goods anywhere, anytime, any time zone immediately. And everyone's kind of the same boat. So True. that, that playing field is so level, it makes the ideas even more important that the ideas have got to show up. Um, in any way you can deliver them. It's not, it's not theater. It's not bringing in a bunch of ponies and circus acts, uh -huh. you know, in yeah. the old days, you right. might try some of that trickery, but you can't do that anymore. You can't even play audio well. Yeah. I mean, so you got, you got that idea. It better be there, man. And that's what we're all about. That's probably a, probably a bonus for us, actually, that it forces you to be focused and okay. tell them, tell a great story that can land in a two inch by four inch rectangle on yeah. the screen. It's an, I, and in that sense, it's almost more of an art form than it was, or it's mm -hmm. changed. I mean, and I was going to ask, and maybe that's part of the answer, but I mean, what, so because you've done a lot of this, yeah. would you have a big piece of advice for pitching today to agencies, especially, I mean, because it's interesting. We have like a lot of the firms we work with are small and mid-sized agencies. A lot of them don't pitch a, a lot these days and they, they, they don't necessarily mind that, but there's other ones and you can see the passion just in you answering my question that love it. And they're like, man, it is rough these days, but yeah. it, one piece of advice that might be kind of tough to answer, but. Well, I, I, I think it still holds true. Nobody loves a sales pitch. Everyone yeah. loves a good story. It doesn't matter where you are. I mean, that's as, as old as time. Tell a story. Um, and I would, I would advise pay super close attention in those early days, in those early meetings and play back 
those tidbits in your story. Nice. And they, and they will get that quickly out. These people listen. Go do your research. Go do site visits. Grab names of a chef or a, a bartender or somebody on the line and, and, and work some of that stuff into the story shows you care shows you listen um but it's still about it's still about the story um yeah uh, if you um anyway that's just well i i love that from my standpoint in the business development world especially and that's going to be one of the clips by the way love it what? that what's that not even before you get to the pitch but talking about those early meetings and replaying some of those things again that you paid attention that you care that that this is what it's like to work with us we haven't even started working together yet this is what you can expect i love that because it's going to work for you even in the second meeting that you have with them you start coming in and showing them because it's weird how many times i've heard that because we hear from the other side from marketers too that what a piss poor job that agency mm. did to the point where they're like i'm not gonna have a second meeting why would i do it they didn't even in the what meeting. is there a theme with the you said the piss poor job. What is there a theme with that you've heard that makes a piss poor job in their minds? Like what, what they well, didn't care, didn't listen, didn't show up. But. Uh, not that they didn't show well, maybe show up in their minds, but yeah, oddly some that they, they, they didn't listen. I mean, that's one of the things that agencies early in the early phases of, of biz dev and, and the biggest, one of the biggest things. And I think they've gotten better at it, but we see a lot of these first meetings um, and we're help. We're there to help coach and counsel for clients, but it's you're talking way too much about yourself, and you need to shut up and listen to what they're telling you, so that you will have some of those seeds or whatever we, euphemism or whatever we want to use. It's not a euphemism, Kentucky. Um, yeah. um, well, I've, heard, I've heard like this 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 sense that from the agency standpoint, aren't you lucky to be in the room with oh, us? One hundred percent. That's not good. Yeah, we don't have clients. I can honestly say, I mean, our, we don't, we're not those kind of folks. And I don't think our, any of our clients are either, but absolutely have heard those stories uh, for sure. And that's, that's very, yeah. What client is going to be, or potential client is ever going to embrace that? I, I wouldn't think. Uh, no, we got you. one more question, believe it or not. Um, no. I mean, we can have. Is it a four parter? <laughs> is it just a one part? It might be. I think we got a couple. I think we got, I got, we got several. I'm excited about it. Uh, okay. The last one is for the marketers, because uh, they're going to be viewing this as well. Uh, none of them like you, by the way, Bill. So What's that? Uh, none, none of them like you. Um, no. we're, we're off to a good start. Um, no, they all love you. Um, sincerely, if there, was, if there was a piece of advice, let's say you have a VP of marketing mm. right here, that you could give them to mm. make the agency relationship better, mm. Mm. what would that be? Mm. Uh, they probably already know this, at least deep down. I'm going to say it out loud. I'm going to say it out loud though. If you have to push your agency, you have the wrong agency. <laughs> uh, okay. that's a creative media PR, whatever they, the agency or the partner there needs to be the one calling BS on the, the status quo, the system and constantly be offering other ways of thinking and, uh, in ways that you didn't expect, um, th ways of thinking of a challenge that that uh, is just uh, not just falling in line and taking orders. Um, that's a phrase that's been around forever. But they always need to bring you ideas that you didn't expect, make you a little nervous. Um, they need to show up with the energy, with the enthusiasm, with the passion every single time. Um, showing that they care as much about the brand or more maybe even than you do. And if any of them, if any of them ever start off a presentation saying we're excited to be here, you, you fire them on the spot. <laughs> That's the dumbest <laughs> ice cream <laughs> waste of time. Watch, do it, do it. Watch people's eyes glaze over. They go to their laptop. They all of a sudden they go to their phone and then so they're just tuning you out. You just lost the room. Okay. You're so That's excited to be here. Bitch advice right there. Uh, Please don't ever say that. Anybody out there, don't ever say we're excited to be here. <laughs> I'll find you. I'll hear about it and I will find you. And you'll get a strongly worded uh, something. I wasn't sure how that question was going to land, but but in all seriousness, I think we have like the quote of the interview. Seriously, 
I love it. And, and, and we, we have a version of that that we talk about to some of our clients sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's what you literally, what you said. I mean, if you have to push your agency, you, you made the wrong choice. I, I, I'm misquoting you exactly there, but that is going to be the quote for when we put this up on YouTube and everywhere else. That's awesome. I mean, and it's hundred percent true. Um, oh man, I, I've heard it. And, and then we get leads, we get clients that way because they, they just feel like I shouldn't have to push. I shouldn't have to put, they kind of don't get it or I don't think they care or I, I don't understand why you're in that business. Yeah. I don't know what's happened. I don't, maybe they didn't, <laughs> right. they, I, I don't know, but that, that is a huge red flag. I mean, yeah. that's probably all the red flags you need. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love it. Um, all right, Bill, this has been excellent. Oh, come on. Come on. We're, we're, that's it? we're yeah, that's it, man. We're, we're in and out. We're cutting to the chase. I do want you to, so we're putting up a URL. People are going to see where you are. Uh, anything that any folks should know about Poke the Bear at this point? I mean, you literally mm -hmm. just launched a site not that long ago, but anything folks should know? I mean, you're on you're on the platforms. Social. Yeah, we're on the platforms. And, and I think I would say if you go to that stuff, you know, plugging pokethebear.agency and you don't get it, or it's not clear what we do or what value we could bring that maybe we're not the right choice because we built that thing to be very self-evident. Yep. And we're not trying to be for everybody. Uh, and that's okay. That, and I, think, okay. I encourage folks to go and other agencies to go actually, uh, and marketers who are watching too, if you want some, no, good. Good. but it, I think it's a solid site. I, I just, I wouldn't say anything if I didn't think so, because you mean too much to me, Bill, but solid uh, site was the goal. Um, it's good we're, 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 um, we're new, so maybe none of this advice is worth anything. Uh, we'll, you know, check back in a year. But um, we love what you're doing, Lee. Uh, 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 your passion, your your brand is so strong. Of what oh, you guys do, you got you got marketers' backs, you got agencies' backs. It's so clear. Oh, um, it. Yeah, it's fun. We we really enjoy it. Yeah, and I think that you got to make a good point, man. If you're not passionate about it, get out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe, you know, okay. it's still some bourbon. Man. Get, get in a band. It's open for smashing up. I hope to talk to you soon, man. I hope, I hope, I hope we get to, get to do this again sometime. This is fun. Really appreciate it, man. It's been great to have you.